The actual mechanics of collecting signatures is a little bit tricky. If you only have one or two towns, then you can get away with just a clipboard, a couple of <clears throat> a couple of petitions, and you can go to people and say, "Ah, oh, you're from Abington, sign here." If you try to bend back the pages, it gets awkward very quickly, and especially if you have several pages and you have to turn them over anything and put them out, and it's very easy to drop them. So don't do that. Now, let me show you how I set up my clipboard so that I can be most efficient. On my clipboard, I start off with the rubber band to hold the paper down on the spindy. I have a post-it note on either side of the clipboard, and I'm going to use this for when I'm testing my pen. At the very bottom, I have a little bit of a form which is filled out correctly, so that I will be able to come up to people and say, please sign your name here. If you're like me and your signature is not easy to read, please print your name afterwards, and then only your street address. Don't fill in the ward and precinct, the city will do that for us. This is a $2 clipboard that I got at Staples. I like the fact that the holding part is very flat. It doesn't have a big thing up here, which is often troublesome and gets in the way. It does have a little tab for hanging here, which does occasionally get in the way. So instead of cutting it off, I actually take a piece of paper, double it up a few times, stick it in the Behind the tab like that, and I push the tab down, and it won't rattle and it won't bother me anymore, and I can forget it. When I have been collecting signatures in the Boston Common, I have often had 50 or more pages, and that can get really, really confusing. So, this is what I do. I have one of these uh, portfolios. This one has seven spaces, so the first six are alphabeticalized. I have a list of all the towns and cities in Massachusetts. There are 351 of them. And I have actually divided up the tabs according to the number of towns, uh, starting with the various letters. Then I take the sheets that already have town names on them, and of course I'll write up some of these beforehand for towns that I'm expecting, and I'll write others up when I'm actually there. These will go into the portfolio here backwards, because I want to be able to read the town name easily. If I put it in like this, I won't be able to read the town name very well. I'm going to put them in backwards like this. So here they are in the portfolio. And so when I'm working with it, when I'm working with it, I'll be able to lift up all the pages here and turn them like that. And now, of course, it's really easy to see which town is which. I use felt-tip pen, so it's big and black and exceedingly easy to read. Let's compare it with a, here it is, with a regular ballpoint pen. It's not bad, but I want this part to be blindingly easy. People signing, I want to sign with a ballpoint pen. This does bleed through just a tiny bit, and we want to be very, very careful. We want our city clerks to be happy with us. Our city clerks are our friends. We want to keep them happy. Now, to be able to use this thing, we need a few more pieces of equipment. In the back section, I will keep my list of towns and cities, and of course it's always nice to spell the city name correctly. I'm sure the Abington people would not appreciate me making a mistake. So, towns and cities, these lists go into the very back folder of the portfolio. Information sheets, anything that I might hand out will go back here. Now, to carry that thing, I have taken 
one of these standard really cheap little sacks, I think, and I have cut off the front part of the uh, holders. I have sewn them together. I want the holder to be about this long. This is where it will be effective to use. So you want it this long. You don't want it folding. It needs to be nice and stiff so that you can use it effectively. So I take a piece of cardboard that's about, oh, maybe an inch, half an inch. So now I'm going to keep it nice and stiff. So my set of cities are going to go in. They are going to go in facing me. So I keep the top bent back and open. I might even cut it off. And I slide it back in here on this side of the cardboard. So I want it facing me because this is how I'm going to be using it. I'll be looking at it from here. My clipboards go into the sack also. This side always faces out. So the clipboard in front faces out this way. If I carry a second clipboard, some people like to use two clipboards, it's going to be on the opposite side, also facing out. Otherwise, otherwise the uh, clips here can hit on the things we don't want that. We want things to slip, slide in exceedingly smoothly and we don't want to have to think about it at all. You should carry at least four pens. You're going to lose some of them. Don't use your best pen. The felt tip pen is only for you. Now, you can put other things in the bag. For example, buttons, cards, and pens but you need to be very, very careful that they do not interrupt in any way your use of the clipboards and the sheets. So, buttons, I find that I can take the very, very last slot, and this is uh, uh, back where we have the post-it notes, and I can drop a baggie of a few buttons behind there, and that does not disturb my use of anything else. Clean sheets, you're going to want a lot of clean sheets. I put them at the end of the W through Z section because I don't want them in the very back section where the buttons are and I might even take my cards, I could drop my cards down in that section and I may well have extra pens. I can drop the pens, actually I think I'll drop the pens uh, down where one of the uh, clipboards is. And the very bottom here, the pens, of course, do not disturb the movement of the floor. But you do need to be careful. You don't want to disturb anybody's movement. Now we're ready to go. Let me show you how I do my thing. Here we are, over my shoulder, just like I wanted to, nice and stiff. I'm walking along. Take out my clipboard, I've got my sign. Hi, do you believe that corporations are not people, should not have political rights, and that we, the human beings, should determine what democracy is in our country? Oh, you do? Yes, we are trying to get our men about Citizens United, blah, blah, blah. Are you a registered voter in Massachusetts? Oh, you are? Wonderful. What town do you vote in? Ah, Acton. Let me find Acton. Clipboard goes back in. You do not want to be holding two things at the same time. You want to have everything as simple as possible. It will be windy, there will be noise, things will be happening. Now, I've got these set up. You can see the letter towards me. I am going to reach in here, and here are the first set, A through C. I'm going to take all of them, turn them up. Now, I'm looking at the letters. It's really easy to find. There's Acton. What I'm going to do is take all the ones in front of Acton and turn them down. Then Acton is ready to be taken. First, I will get out the clipboard because I want to minimize my movements. I want to minimize the amount that I'm holding two things. Now I'm ready for Acton. 
Is it this side or this side? Oh, it's this side. Great. It goes underneath the rubber band. It goes up into position. And now we are ready to sign. And of course, boom. And so they sign. We're done. Pen goes back. Now I'm going to replace it where it belongs. Paper comes off. Clipboard goes into the very front section. I don't want to be holding the clipboard while I'm doing this. I'm going to put it back with this facing me. I've got these up so it's very obvious to put it back right where it was. Then I turn these over, facing down, and now I'm ready to go back and start again.